Hello, my name is Michael, and this video is a hands-on tutorial for learning AngularJS. Here we're going to focus on learning, understanding, and applying Angular directives. So first of all, what is an Angular directive? Well, according to the AngularJS website, directives basically attach event listeners to the HTML to make it interactive. And on the AngularJS website, there's a huge list of Angular directives. In this video, we're just going to cover five sample directives. One, ng-app, two, ng-model, three, ng-repeat, four, ng-controller, and five, ng-click. This tutorial is going to look a lot like another tutorial on YouTube by a guy named Dan Wallen, which is an incredible tutorial, but I just thought it might be helpful to do something in a slightly different way in case I say something extra that might be helpful for somebody else. And also making a video like this helps me understand the material better as well. So let's get started now. Before we begin, I'm going to create a new folder called Angular Directives in my projects folder. So I'm going to name this Angular Directives. And in this new folder, I'm going to create a file called index.html. So I'm going to go to new text document, index.html. Uh, make sure you can see the file extensions. My other videos show you how to do that. Um, this is where we're going to demonstrate all of the following Angular directives. So let's open up this file now. I'm using Sublime Text, which you can Google and download if you don't have it yet. Uh, so now in my index.html file, let's first just set up our basic layout. So let's type the following here. Doc type HTML, HTML, close that. And I'm typing out everything just for instruction's sake. In the future, we can copy paste stuff, but um, it's always good to type out everything when you're just learning it for the first time. That way you can slow down and actually think about what you're doing. So I'm going to have my title be Angular Directives. I'm going to create a body down here. I'm going to make a div class equals container. Close the... Uh, Close the div here. I have a header or a heading uh, called Angular Directives also. And at the bottom here, I'm going to uh, find the CDN link for AngularJS. You can find that at the homepage here. Click on download. Triple click this CDN link here. Go back to my file here. I'm going to type in um, script src equals close the script tag. So the script link at the bottom links our HTML or index.html file to an AngularJS CDN or content delivery network, which means that it can now use AngularJS code. Now let's just open up our index.html file in a browser to see what this looks like. Uh, we can just go here, right click, open with Google Chrome. And as you can see, Angular Directives shows up in the title up here and as a heading in the body of the page here. So now let's start going through the Angular Directives. Directive number one, ng-app. According to the AngularJS website, we use ng-app to auto-bootstrap an AngularJS application. The ng-app directive designates the root element of the application and is typically placed near the root element on the page. So here's an example of how to use the ng-app directive. It's pretty simple. In our index.html file, let's just include in the HTML tag ng-app up here. And that's pretty much it for this directive. This basically just sets up our document to be able to use other Angular directives and code. Another popular place to put ng-app is in the body tag, but we're just going to put it in the HTML tag here. Directive number two, ng-model. According to the website, the ng-model directive binds an input select text area, or custom form control to a property on the scope. Angular uses two-way data binding, which is basically the automatic synchronization of data between the model and view components. And scope is basically the glue between the application controller and the view. For us, our view is our index.html file. Now, let's look at one example of how to use data binding with ng-model, and then when we get to the ng-controller directive, we'll come back to try another example. For now, let's just add this code to our index.html file below the h1 heading. 
let's type in H2 ng model example two way data binding and dollar sign scope. We'll wait till the controller part to get to the dollar sign scope part. And for now, let's just type in H3 name. Uh, close that. Let's make an input with type text and ng model equals name. And then let's put a break there. And let's type in hello, and then put double brackets around name there and then exclamation point. So now let's save and refresh our browser to see what this looks like. I'm just gonna hit F5 here. So now we see a text box here where we can enter our names. I can type in Michael Chang, or I can type in uh, John Doe or Sally Smith. So that's Angular's two-way data binding or automatic synchronization of data between the model and view components. We're going to come back to the ng model directive and talk about dollar sign scope when we get to the ng controller directive, which just happens to be next. Directive number three, ng controller. According to the website, the ng controller directive attaches a controller class to the view. This is a key aspect of how Angular supports the principles behind the model view controller design pattern. Basically, the purpose of a controller is to separate different parts of our code and to make our code more maintainable and testable. The view will focus on handling what the user sees, and the controller will focus on handling the interaction between the view and the model, or basically the data. Now, let's look at an example of how to use the ng-controller directive. First, in our index.html file, let's add this code inside the div container tag. So let's just add ng-controller equals, we'll name this demo controller right here. So now, in our Angular directives folder, let's create a new file called controller.js. So let's just name it controller.js. And normally, we would want to make a specific folder for our controllers, but we're just going to keep it simple for now. And before we do anything with this new controller.js file, let's first include it as a script in our index.html file. So at the bottom of our index.html file, let's type this right here. script src equals controller.js. And close the script tag there. Now, let's open this file and define what demo controller does by typing this code right here. Let's open this. Let's type in this code right here. var demo controller equals function. We're going to put the dollar sign scope there, and I'll explain that in a little bit. And then we're going to write scope.name equals John Doe. Here we see the dollar sign scope that we mentioned earlier for the ng model directive being passed as an argument for the demo controller function. This makes sense since we said the scope is the glue between the model or the data and the view. And our controller will basically control what happens between the model and the view. So here, the scope.name refers to anything in the view with the property name. So namely, these things right here, we have the um, ng model name here and the double bracket around name right there. Um, and we're going to put in the string John Doe for these properties in the view. So now, if we refresh our browser, we should see John Doe automatically show up in both the input box and next to the hello. So let's try that. Save it and press F5. And there we go. We see John Doe in the input box and next to the hello because the scope bound the John Doe to the name property. So by combining the ng model, ng controller, and scope, we can inject custom data into our view. In my MeanStack tutorial video series, I explain how to do this with data from an external database using RESTful API get, post, delete, and put requests. So if you're interested in learning how to do that, you can check out that series. Now, let's move on to the next directive, which is ng-repeat. Directive number four, ng-repeat. According to the website, the ng-repeat directive instantiates a template once per item from a collection. Basically, if we have an array with more than one item, we can use the ng-repeat directive to display each of these items with very little code. Let's try an example to see how this works. First. Let's create an array with several items in it with two properties each, name and number. In our controller.js file, let's type this code in our demo controller function. Normally, we probably don't want to put our data directly in the controller, but we're just keeping things simple for our purposes here. So let's type this in our controller.js file. Let's just type in uh, var friend1, and friend1 is going to have name uh, Tim Thompson comma, and number is going to be, let's make it 111, 111, 1111, 
And let's make a friend two now. So var friend two is going to be, we'll make her name um, Sally Smith. And her number will be 222222222. And let's make a third friend. So friend three. I'm going to put semicolons at the end of these just because it makes me feel good. All right, equals name will be Billy Bob. Number will be 333333333. Okay, so now let's create an array with these three friends in it. So our array will be uh, called friends with an S there. I'm going to put square brackets here, and it's going to be friend1, comma, friend2, comma, friend3. And then let's um, bind this variable to our um, view with scope.friends equals friends. So this means that uh, the friends in the view will not be connected with the friends uh, right here in the controller. So here we've created three friends and put them into an array called friends. Then the scope.friends equals friends will connect the data from the friends array with our view. So now let's go to our index.html file and use the ng repeat directive to list out each of these friends on our page. To do this, let's type this code underneath what we've already written. Let's type h2 ng repeat example and then h3 list of friends and then we're going to create an unordered list here. And we're going to create a new list right here. It's going to be ng repeat equals friend in friends. And then we're going to have, I'm going to list it out as friend.name, comma, friend.number. Then we're going to close the list element right here. So notice that in the ng-repeat directive, we typed in friend in friends. This tells the ng-repeat directive to separate out each of the objects in the friends array. Now, we don't need to use the word friend here. We could use any word as long as the word in the double brackets matches that word. And in the double brackets, we're displaying the two different properties of each object, friend.name and friend.number, and separating these two properties with a comma. So now, let's save our work and refresh our browser to see what this looks like. F5 right there. And we'll see now that each of our friends are now listed out with just the code that we've just written. And now before we move on to the next directive, let's try combining ng-model with ng-repeat to filter our list of friends. Right below our unordered list, let's type this code. Let's type in h3 filter by name. And right here, let's make a new input type equals text. This will be ng model equals, we're going to name this filter dot name, and we'll see why in a little bit. And inside our ng repeat directive, let's add this code right here. Uh, just right after the friends here, inside the quotation mark, let's add a pipe here. And then filter by the filter. So basically, this filter up here refers to this filter down here, and the dot name says that we're going to filter our friends by their names. So now, Let's refresh our browser, and then uh, now if we type into this input box, we can filter our friends by name. If I type in T, these two friends will show up because they each have T in their name, but then if I type in TI, uh, only Tim will show up. Also, if I type in, uh, let's try O, those two will show up, or B, uh, only Billy Bob has B in it. So that's how you filter by name. That's a really efficient way to do that. So now let's move on to the next Angular directive. Directive number five is ng-click. According to the website, the ng-click directive allows you to specify custom behavior when an element is clicked. Now let's go straight into an example and demonstration by creating a button with the directive ng-click that will add a new friend when we click it. So underneath our existing code, let's write this. All right, at h3, ng-click example, add a new friend. And this will be an h3. We're going to create a uh, h4 name. 
and then we're going to create an input type equals text ng model equals we'll make it add friend that friend name and I'm putting friend name instead of just name because we already have a name up here and that'll confuse angular and then let's put in a um, another h4 and this will be a number we're going to put in another input type equals text ng model equals add friend dot friend number this time and then we're going to put in a button with ng click equals add friend and it's going to say add friend at the button so this add friend here is going to be a function uh, that's going to be called when the button is clicked and now we need to define the add friend function in our controller so let's go back to our controller.js file and let's just type this code underneath our existing code let's type in scope dot add friend that's going to refer to the function from the ng click um, and then function the function is going to do scope dot friends so it's going to add to the we're going to do push here so that's going to add to the friends array and we're going to push the name the name is going to be scope dot add friend dot friend name and the number is going to be scope dot add friend dot friend number. So the add friend will refer to what's in the input box and the dot friend name refers to the different properties that the uh, input box refers to. And so now let's refresh our browser to see this code in action. So F5 right there. So let's try entering in a new name and number. Um, our new name will be, let's call her Molly. Miller and our uh, new number will be 444 444 4444. Let's click on add friend, and there we see our new friend added to uh, our list of friends. Okay, so these are all the Angular directives that we're going to cover in this video. Check out the next video to learn more about using AngularJS. Thanks for watching, and I will see you there.